Dooby doop doop walking in normally having a good yeah. day. Ah. Yeah, you. What? You wanna buy some krell? Krell? Krell, you know, krell. You want you wanna buy some krell? I got krell patches for sale. That sounds like drugs. It's not drugs, it's krell. I'd rather have the drugs. I got drugs too though. Drugs? Look, if you just let me explain what these krell patches are, I'll throw in some free drugs. Krell? You never even heard about the super advanced technological race of the Crow, who then led to a music that was done about them, and it was a patch and modular and then stuff like that, you know? No, why would I have heard of the ancient Krell, the super technologically advanced race from the Forbidden Planet, who had a song called The Music of the Ancient Krells written about them in the style of music concrete, but was later transferred into a modular patch, and now it becomes sort of an exercise for modular people to patch certain things. I've never heard of them. I'm gonna go. Look, if you listen to me explain what Krell patching is, I'll give you free drugs. Wait. You promise? That's it? Yeah, you just have to listen to me talk about krell patches. Okay. Okay, cool. Well, could we go inside? It's really cold out here and my pants are wet. Okay, fine. Let's go. Dope. Let's go. You want to buy a krell? I can't do that voice anymore and I stepped on the sunglasses on the way in. So we will not be doing uh, that bit anymore, but hey, it was fun while it lasted, right? My name is Jeremy. This is Red Means Recording. This video is about the krell patch. Uh, I got a bug up my butt about what the krell patch was because I kept on hearing about it. I wanted to know. And so I did a bunch of research and I think it's really cool. And I want to tell you all about the krell patch. Um, it's fun. It's neat. I just get some reading glasses. Uh, <laughs> the Krell patch is Todd Barton's modular interpretation of the ancient music of the Krell song from the 1956 Forbidden Planet film soundtrack. So let's take a listen to that real quick. Stunning. It's beautiful. It's truly beautiful. Uh, an interesting thing about that was uh, the soundtrack wasn't actually done with modular gear. It was actually done in a style called music concrete, which is really, really interesting. Music concrete is a type of musical composition that utilizes recorded sounds as raw material. Sounds are often modified to the application of audio signal processing and tape music techniques and may be assembled into a form of montage. It can feature sounds derived from recordings of musical instruments, the human voice, and the natural environment, as well as those created using computer-based digital signal processing. Compositions in this idiom are not restricted to the normal musical rules of melody, harmony, rhythm, meter, and so on. Using ideas and procedures from the book Cybernetics, or Control and Communication in the Animal and Machine by the mathematician and electrical engineer Norbert Weiner, Lewis Barron constructed his own electronic circuits that he used to generate the scores bleeps, blurps, whirs, whines, throbs, hums, and screeches. Most of these sounds were generated using an electronic circuit called a ring modulator. After recording the basic sounds, the Barons further manipulated the sounds by adding other effects, such as reverberation and delay, and reversing or changing the speeds of certain sounds. Pretty neat, right? So you have sound generation, and then you have like tape manipulation. Actually, I think the make noise, micro sound, and tape modular system is a really great example of a little music concrete station if you wanted to play around with that. Uh, of course, there's other ways we can do it too. And now in DAWs these days, we can just go, you know, crazy with the whole concept. I think Andrew Huang's like, let's make a song out of a bicycle or a car kind of thing could also be considered a form of music concrete. So I don't know exactly why Todd Barton decided to reproduce ancient music of the Krells via a modular system. In fact, he used a Buchla system, which we'll talk about in just a second. Like all weird modular projects is kind of like, well, why not? You know, you get an idea in your head and you're like, can I do that? And um, it's become sort of a, you know, rite of passage as you're getting into modular to maybe try to do a Krell patch. And there's lots of ways we can do it. And I promise we'll get to that soon. But let me tell you about Barton's interpretation of the Krell thing and what became the core of the Krell patch. Ooh, woo. Hey, it's editing, Jeremy. I was gonna read like a bunch of text and it was gonna make zero sense to anybody. So it's better if I just show you what the basic thing is here for the Krell patch, like what the basic structure is, okay? So the first thing we need is what's called a function generator. For us, that's gonna be the Bifaco Rampage. And a function generator in this case creates a rise and a fall, an attack and decay, uh, and it's going to do it in a looping sort of function. Another really great example of a function generator is maths everyone's favorite function generator. So let's go ahead and get the output of this. I'll get out A into here. These function generators need to cycle. And I just hit a cycle and I hit trig and now you can see they are going at it, aren't they? Now that these are cycling, if we change the fall time and up and down or the rise time up and down, we get a new sort of function. 
We're going to be using this to drive uh, the rest of our patch along with something called the end of cycle trigger right here. These are creating little pulses every single time this function finishes its thing. Isn't that neat? We need to modulate the rise and fall of this function generator. And I have been using marbles for that. Marbles creates random voltages. There is an example of what marbles is going to be doing for us here. Uh, this is going to go into rise and this is going to go into fall. Now you can see that our function generator is going to act a little bit differently based on the voltage that it's getting from marbles. Marbles. And that's exactly what we want. Let's get an oscillator. I like the CSL from Instro for this demonstration. So let <laughs> me get uh, this final output here into here. So this first function generator, this green one, this will be our VCA. We need to get this pitched around. And for that, we need a random voltage generator. So I'm just going to search for random and I'm going to grab two of these random voltage generators. Because scopes are cheap as chips in here, there's no reason for us not to see what these are doing. These are creating random voltages. Now the trick of this patch is to take that end of cycle pulse and use it to trigger the random voltage generator so that every single time there's a pulse, there's a new voltage that's picked. So we're going to put this into the trig in of both of these. I'm going to grab an attenuverter and a quantizer. The attenuverter is going to take this outcoming voltage, which might get a little crazy out of our random generator, and it's going to squish it down for us. So I'll put that into here, and then we'll go to our quantizer, which we can make things have a scale to them. So here we go. So every single time that end of cycle happens over here, every single time our function generator is done, we get a new voltage. So all this stuff is starting to get related now, isn't it? The next step of this is timbre. And because this is a complex oscillator, there's a relationship between this bottom oscillator and the top one built into it. So I'm gonna use our second random voltage here to drive that. And I'm gonna smooth this one out over here. And that's pretty much it. We do have one more out here we could use. Ooh woo! Ooh woo! Ooh woo! So this is the basics of the Corel patch. A function generator with its rise and fall being modulated by some kind of control voltage, in this case marbles. One of those functions is used on a VCA to control the volume of our sound. The other one could be sent off to do some timbre work. The end of cycle or end of rise, in the case of math, uh, trigger outputs are used to pick a new random voltage, which is used to pitch our oscillator around and maybe do some fun stuff over here too, you know? This very silly little friend here with an, an insane amount of possibility in terms of what can be done. It's not supposed to be necessarily a super musical thing, though there are musical examples of the Corel, which we'll get into. This is its basis. It talks to itself. It can be a little friend. With a little bit of work, you can make it pretty too. So now that we understand this, let's get back to the other Jeremy and uh, hopefully he'll have something interesting to tell you more. I, God, I hope. God, please, I hope. So I hope. I, I hope. Crow, 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 crow. Crow, 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 crow. Crow, 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 crow. So in the preparation of making this video, I went and I did a bunch of curl patching myself. I did my little VCB rack curl patch, and then I did a bunch of patching over here too. I did three separate curls over there, and I'm gonna put them up on my second channel for you to listen to. There are also some really wonderful examples of curl patches online that I thought I'd share with you as well. And uh, we're gonna start off with this uh, invasion of the poly curl. This one's so cool. And they actually go and uh, show how they did it. Um, step by step, they have like a little diagram and they show each one of the modules and how it's plugged in. So this is a very uh, like kind of classic Krell sounding thing. Um, <laughs> I love it. I think it's great. There's this really wonderful polyphonic Krell uh, called Polycube, which also I think is from the same person has a great diagram that shows uh, how they did it. It's just the way that these patches can go from like 
pretty to just insane is so great because it's the sample and hole and the randomness that's making everything work. This is like the essence of modular patching and I think it's really, really cool. So this is a wonderful site called Patch Storage, which has stuff for like VCV rack. Well, a lot of things actually, even the Zoya, you know? And I found some Krill patches on there that I'd like to share with you. There's this one called Duet, which is really, really well done. Um, there's a link for it in the description. Uh, the great thing about these is like you can go and like investigate how they work and you can get a better sense of maybe how you could patch a Krill without having to spend a bunch of money on, <laughs> on Monitor, you know? Here's a nice little one called Krell 100, which I believe is based on the uh, Buklo 100 system. Very classic Krell. And I know you're probably saying, wow, this isn't musical at all. Well, don't worry. We're going to get to some musical ones. The thing about this is it's not necessarily about being musical. It's about exploring <laughs> the sort of like atonality and emergent systems that happen when randomness is involved in patches. Here's one called Krell 0405. You can hear this one uses quantized voltages and some noise coming in and out. This is what happens when you quantize that random voltage. You can get much more of that sort of like classic generative feeling thing. You can see also that they're using dual rampages, which is, is pretty baller. And they're also using a wave folder to get some of that classic Buchla uh, feeling thing going on. Finally, we have one from, I believe, Omni Cohen called Let's Build a Krell Patch. This one uses two FM oscillators, which I think is a really, really great choice. Uh, frequency modulation oscillators are going to play a really great part in this. And you can also hear that the voltage has been quantized, so it's not that atonal sort of thing. I don't know. I love a quantized patch. I love, you know, pitches, but I think that Krells are actually more interesting if you leave them um, unquantized and work on that timbre manipulation. Really get it to feel like it's talking almost. Oh, I did four four different krells. So the first krell was definitely uh, <laughs> definitely more atonal inspired. My second krell was definitely focused on quantized values and doing a bit more pretty stuff. You can hear rings in there, which is not a voice that really fits into this whole thing. But again, it still works. Like it's still the idea that led to it, the basic krell idea leading to uh, the patch that you hear. My third one, I know I was making really, really heavy use of the Piston Honda Wavetable Oscillator because it has that timbre shaping that uh, I need from a complex oscillator kind of concept. You know, the Buchla stuff is sort of inherently complex sounding or wave foldering or whatever. So a wavetable oscillator makes a lot of sense in this case. I also introduced, I believe, the Trinity from ModMap into this, which is doing these really interesting sort of glitchy drum stuff in the background and then filled it all in with reverbs and delays. My final uh, one in the series just turned out to be like pure chaos, um, which I really, really liked. Uh, <laughs> I, I, again, no control over this. It's just like completely weird. And I like that. That's cool. On the complete other end of the spectrum from what you just heard and using much more in smarts and less money um, are these series of patches for the Zoya. This is the standout of this video, honestly, from uh, user Wilhelm Zenhorst. He did three patches based on the Terry Pratchett, Stephen Baxter uh, series called The Long Earth. And these things are just beautiful. Just absolutely mind-blowingly beautiful. I cannot understand how they pulled this off in the Zoya. So I took these and uh, added some extra sound effects underneath and uploaded them to my second channel as well. So you can check out like 30-minute plays of those things as well. And then you can go download the patches from Patch Storage for free and check them out. These are masterworks. And I think, uh, if I'm not incorrect, that William Zenorus actually has a ton of really interesting stuff up there. So definitely go check that out. I'll put a link in the description. And Willem, Seriously, amazing work on these. And finally, uh, while I was getting this video ready, I asked uh, James Sigler to do a Krell for us, and I'd like to kick it over to him and see what he has to say and listen to his Krell. Let's, let's do that. All right, so this is a technique I use all the time now that I learned specifically from patching the Krell patch. Um, I always loved the envelopes uh, end of cycle time triggering a new pitch, more random voltage, and then that voltage determining the envelope length and that being a fun feedback system. But I always wanted to be able to synchronize that with some external clock signal. So all I need to do that is some kind of logic AND gate, and I'm using the Integra Funcatus here to do this. Um, so what's happening is a steady clock, say 16th notes are coming into the Integra. Um, and I'm using the end of cycle output on the contour into the CV input to act as a AND gate. So what's happening is the uh, every so many 16th clock triggers, the contour will fire, it will sustain for whatever the random controlled decay time is, and then won't trigger again until it's finished 
and then the next 16th note clock cycle comes in. So it's always going to trigger on a 16th note pulse, but the duration is going to be a random length of time. We're doing that with two envelopes here. One is the DPO final, one is the sine wave to kind of fatten up the fundamental. As you can hear, we can play with the clock rate. And we patch our external drum machine in. Instant grooves. And that, my friends, is the Krell patch, what I wanted to talk to you about today. I hope this was interesting to you. Um, you know, I've hopefully I've also shown you that you don't need to spend a billion dollars on these things to explore the world of Krelling. Uh, you can go get VCV Rack right now for free. Every single module you need uh, to do this is in VCV Rack a standard. And I think you should, if you haven't already explored Krelling. Go spend, spend, spend some time with Krell. Do some Krell, okay? Snort that Krell. Find a friend and booty bump some Krell. Go to a nightclub, get into the bathroom, undo the baggie of Krell. Snort the Krell. I do not suggest injecting the Krell. I think that's probably a really bad idea. And if your friend has a problem with Krell, you know, like they're Krelling too much, it is okay if you talk to them about it. Do you have favorite Krell tips and tricks? Put them in the comments below. Give this video some engagement, you know? Give this video some engagement so the algorithm likes it. Algorithm hates these kinds of videos, but you can help. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that this has been very Krelly for you. My name is Jeremy. This is Red Means Recording, and I hope you have a very wonderful Krell.